Hey, what's going on YouTube and all my Forex fiends out there? Corey Smith here with CoreFX bringing you another weekly technical talk video. Today is Friday, July 27th, 2018, uh, about 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I know the markets are still open, but after 1 o'clock on Fridays, we do get a big slowdown. We do get a lot of banks and investors and traders and all clocking out for the weekend, taking off. Liquidity dries up and really not much changes. So I'm doing the video for next week's trading, getting you guys prepared, telling you guys what I'll be watching, what's going on across all the U.S. dollar crosses against each individual currency's index, as well as I touch on quickly the S&P 500, gold, and oil. For any of you guys new to this, I just go over all the technical breakdown of each of these uh, pairs I just went over with you, as well as a lot of the cross pairs and what I have on my watch list going ahead for next week. What I'll be looking for, how I f identify the trades that I like, and how I really just develop this watch list every weekend to get me prepared for the week ahead with trading. Um, again, we're going over next week's trades. Anybody who's seen these videos before, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these. I know I've been a little busy this month. I've missed two weekends this month as far as the technical talk videos go, and I do apologize for that. I do them as webinars for my students, and I know that I have uh, been missing out on it, but just a big vacation month. Got a lot of stuff going on in my life. Got engaged, had to travel, go to someone's wedding, been all over the place. Um, but I'm back. These videos are going to be coming out consistently now as I don't have anything planned in the next while. So we will continue with these videos. I hope you guys enjoy them. I hope you get some value out of them. we got a very, very, very slam-packed fundamental week coming up ahead from the FOMC and Bank of Japan uh, to Bank of England to New Zealand unemployment reports to European CPI numbers. Really across the board, we got NFP on Friday out of the U.S. Almost every day of the week, there is a headline event going on. So very, very big opportunity this week. These weeks don't come often, especially in the slow summer months like we've got now. So make sure you guys are very aware of everything going on fundamentally this week. Even if you're not a fundamental trader at all and you just trade the charts, you want to be aware of what's going on because there are a lot of events that are going to move the markets this week. All right, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you get something out of these videos. I'm going to go ahead and hop into the charts now, so I'll catch you in there. Alrighty, so hopping over to the charts, we are starting with the indexes for each individual currency. So this is going to be starting off with the US dollar index, also known as the Dixie. DXY is the ticker symbol for it. Um, so basically the US dollar index, we had the US dollar all through 2017 moving lower. Right. We had Donald Trump came in the presidency. He likes a weak dollar. Weak dollar means the US becomes more of a powerhouse for exporting goods because other countries currencies are stronger than ours so they can buy more with their currency versus the US dollar yada 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 so the US dollar has been trending downward all through 2017 2018 bottomed out had a bear pennant broke out and have been seeing strong dollars since so now where we're currently at 95 has been a strong resistance level as you can see with this red line we've tried to break it multiple times and failed most recent one we got an evening star shooting star pattern here but bearish engulfing broke off Kind of just been chopping around all this week. We open this week here, closing this week there. So really not much movement in the US dollar as far as um, you know overall moves. We did get some sell off then rally, but in, in terms of where we started the week and where we ended the week, we really didn't get much of anything. Um, we did get a bullish engulfing bounce here off of the 50 SMA and lower trend line. So that is a bullish sign. However, we are still in this rising wedge pattern. And if we pull up this RSI that divergence is still relevant you know we've got higher highs and higher points being connected here with the um, price action on the candlesticks and then we have our rsi momentum indicator showing the opposite so they're diverging from each other they're disagreeing with each other that's usually one indicator of a reversal coming but again we are in an uptrend that 50 sma is still holding structure is still holding so we are still moving higher so we can still expect this to go higher but we want to be weary of the op uh, the um you know possibility of that dollar reversing and uh, selling off there. But this trend line here, we really want to keep an eye on. Trend line 50 SMA are what I'm watching to see if that holds true with that lower trend line. And um, if not, then we're still looking higher. And now we got this bullish engulfing showing us that momentum is potentially to the upside as well still. That takes us over to the Euro, which looks pretty opposite of the US dollar. As I go over every week with you guys, they are the two heaviest traded pairs. And um, so typically what you see happening on one, you'll see the opposite happening on the other since they're inversely related. But um, the euro is still in a bearish descending triangle. As you guys can see here with these red lines I've drawn to show this. 
Um, we did bounce off this upper trend line here, but we have the 20 SMA now coming to cross the 50. We are rounding out on the bottom here with this SMA. Um, still nothing too crazy to worry about with trend reversal. As long as this upper trend line holds and we're trading below the 50 SMA, I'm not really that worried about it. We could still continue lower here on this euro. Um, but really, until we're out of this basing pattern, uh, this 112.50 is the next resistance, which would be breaking that um, trend line. And this 111 support down here, right by this red line, is where I'm watching for the support. So no real clear direction of where it could go while we're in this, but we are still in a bear trend in a bearish descending triangle pattern, which is a trend continuation pattern. Moving on to the yen. Um, the yen's been a little bit of a you know, choppy pair, but... We have been in a downtrend. We did set a nice lower low last week, bounced off of just above 84.50, rallied. We're setting now a um, lower high potentially. Yen is looking like it's gaining some strength here. Um, the equity markets are selling off a bit today. So we had a little bit of a risk off move. When we have risk off moves, money goes to yen. Yen strengthens. So that's why we're seeing a little bit of this. But this still in this 86.50 range up here. We still have a very strong zone. As you can see, if you look at structure, um, you can see right here, we are still in a strong zone. We're still below the 50 SMA, so I could see us hitting this 50 SMA, hitting this strong zone, and potentially continuing to the downside and letting that trend continue. So I am still bearish the yen. However, we do you know, need to be cautious and keep an eye out and watch to see if this is potentially a trend reversal or if it's going to continue that trend downward. British pound, still moving lower. Um, it rallied up after setting this lower low last week. So we set a lower low. This week, we rallied up. As you can see, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. Again, like the US dollar, we really haven't changed since the open of the week. We also haven't seen a lot of strong movement. You know, very, very minimal movement we've seen here. So not too much going on with this pair, but we did set a new lower low. And this potentially was a new lower high. So what that tells us is now we want to be watching for the next pulse lower for that next lower low move and keep an eye on shorting pound pairs and looking for weakness in the pound if we see that happening canadian dollar um so we were in this downtrend we broke this strong support we were looking for a retest sell off we did get that however it didn't continue all the way down to retest the low or set a new lower low it kind of failed to move lower and then reversed we now broke the 50 sma broke this daily trend line broke this structure, and it's looking like we could be reversing trend here. We're on a strong weekly trend line. As you can see, if you look back with this blue line, um, it is a weekly trend line that could hold, but I'm not seeing any signs of that happening. I'm seeing more so signs of bullish momentum and price reversing and coming back up to move to the upside now. So nothing too great going on with the CAD, nothing too predictable or high probability going on with it. Just want to keep an eye on where it could be going. Swiss franc. Another one with uh, mixed price action. We were in a bear pennant. Now we're in a descending triangle. Still a little bit of a choppy price action. We moved down, then we bounce higher. Then we moved down, then we bounce higher. And now we're kind of just sitting up here around this 94.50 area on the 50 SMA and this upward trend line. Another pair that really didn't move much this week. Um, it's summer months. There's a lot of low volatility. There's a lot of people on vacation and kids out of school. And it's just not as much going on in the world of trading. It's known anywhere in any market and anything. Trading in the summer months is hard, it's slow, and you should really not be entering unless it's perfect, perfect setups. So again, with this pair, we are in a downtrend in a low base. We'd like to see it move to the downside, but there's nothing really clear and strong to be able to predict with this moving forward. Aussie dollar, a um, little bit better. We're in a downtrend. As you guys can see, we've been making a series of nice lower lows and lower highs all down here. Um, now we've been in a little bit of a cluster. In a low basing pattern, could throw a little bit of a bear flag there. Um, could even be potentially a little bit of a bear pennant even. Either way, all these continuation patterns mean the same thing. We've got an impulse leg. Then we've got consolidation, right? we got equilibrium. we got uh, agreement in pricing, no strong moves. And then we need to catch that next break lower, right? That next impulse leg lower. That's what we want to be trading. All in here, we don't want to be trading. 
all in here we do want to be trading in here we don't necessarily want to be trading this next break lower we do so let's watch these black trend lines let's watch this break of this pattern the 7350 support here we want to be watching too and also this 50 SMA and upward trend line for a trend reversal and a break above it is what we want to hold valid to keep that strong so that pretty much covers what's going on in the Aussie um, New Zealand similar to the Aussie as you guys know there is no ticker symbol unfortunately for the New Zealand dollars um, Index, there is one, but it's inverse, and it's just not as good. I like this uh, FinViz much better here. But um, as you guys can see, this is the weekly range that we were in all 20, half of 2016, all 2017, and into 2018. We broke below it and have just been basing here on the daily. This is a very nice setup, I have to say. Um, you can see we've been setting lower lows, lower high, lower low. Now we're in this consolidation again, right? So we set a lower low, consolidated lower low consolidating now we want that next lower low we've got a nice bear flag pattern here we want to see a break you could even wait till it breaks this 67 support or this counter trend line here either way i am definitely watching heavily for new zealand dollar to see if it is going to make a break um to the downside and continue this downtrend because it has been in a nice downtrend and we do want to wait and see if that downtrend is able to continue all right so that covers all of our indexes um going to go ahead and hop into the S&P 500 real quick. This is the U.S. equity markets. So as you can see, sorry, I didn't update this chart here, but as you can see, we have been, um, we, we were in an uptrend, then we sold off. We were a little bit of ugly price action, had a strong sell off here, um, beginning of the year. Then we recovered, sold off. This 200 SMA held support the entire time. It's moving perfectly with this trend line as well. But now we've got a little bit of intermediate trend lines as price has now started to move upwards and it broke above 2780 this strong red resistance line has continued to move higher yes we are getting a sell-off um, nothing to worry about though we've had good earnings seasons we had good GDP results today 4.1 percent GDP growth out of the US strong numbers strong data nothing really fundamentally that could change this picture so this upward trend in the US equity markets is likely to continue um, that has correlations all through the markets, but that is where we stand with SP 500. Still bullish. Did a little bit of a sell off right now, but still bullish. Gold, this is where we were testing that trend line and broke, sold off. And as you guys can see, as I was saying, it has continued to move lower. And I would just continue to be watching for shorts in gold if you trade it. Next short I'd be watching would be at around this level 118 up here. You know, look for a nice pattern if we rally up. Look for something to show you it's continuing downward and then hop into the downside. But that is definitely um, a, a pretty you know, decent probability chance that this downtrend will likely continue. I do think we should get a little bit more of a mean reversion. You know, we're running away from price action here. Uh, price action is running away from moving averages a little bit. So I do think we'll get a little bit more of a correction. That's why I'm thinking around this 118, looking left, we got structure, right? So right around that 118, we could see price rally up to, and then you could be looking for shorts off of it there. Oil, um, it's under this strong 70 level of support resistance psychological resistance support whatever you want to call it um, we are getting a bearish engulfing close today and however if you see let's see if this is a fibonacci level this impulse leg higher when we came up to test 74 up there yes yeah, so we pull back now to the 618 so we're on the 618 um, we got a strong push higher pull back for a higher low now likely to make another push back up to the 74 area we'll see if it's able to get the momentum and able to do that but that is what could happen um, if we stay under this 70 level and price sells off that's a different story because um, this 70 level is certainly strong however i would definitely be watching to see if this is able to continue to the upside and um, we get that strong oil moving higher all right so that takes care of the indexes and uh s&p gold and oil now we're moving on to the fun stuff. We're moving on to the US dollar crosses here. And then from here, we'll move into my watch list for the week ahead. So starting with the Euro US dollar, um, we have been in a bear pennant pattern. So we've got lower lows being, I mean, lower highs being closed up. And then uh, lower highs are here, higher lows are here. And now we're closing and condensing and consolidating. And this is uh, lack of volatility, lack of real strong price action when does when you see stuff like this happening that's usually the momentum building and what you get is you get a pop 
depending on which way it breaks, but you get a pop and now people who have been out of this pair because there hasn't been much going on, they've been waiting for the break, waiting for that next strong move to continue. Now is when you see everybody hop in all at once and you get a strong move out of this um, level. One way you can predict moves out of patterns like this is to measure the size of the pattern from top to bottom. And then let's say we break to the downside, you can measure that, that's a one to one move. Could be down to 112, if you look left, there's some strong levels around there as well. Um, or if we reverse, break to the upside, you could see the next target would be right in line with the 122 level of resistance uh, was support up there. So definitely keep an eye on this pair. I do like this bearish engulfing close that we got here off this upper trend line. So um, I would be leaning more towards a short side. 116 support is still holding though. Uh, it's a strong weekly level as well looking on here. So definitely keep an eye on this pair. I'd be waiting for setups. Um, stick to your plan, stick to your strategy, but there's definitely some opportunities with potential breakouts with this pair this week especially with the FOMC meeting. Um, pound, dollar, I really like this pair. I like it short this week. I'm going to try to find a um, entry to take advantage of this move to the downside, about 100 pips or so. Um, we're looking at this downward trend channel. So we set a nice lower low, price rallied and pulled back for about a week, hit this strong resistance level up here. Um, 618 Fibonacci after this lower low we rallied up to the prior swings move high to low as you can see we hit this 618 right on this very strong 132 resistance level as you can see looking left and we got a bearish engulfing another great sign and that is telling us that momentum's to the downside we want to be looking for shorts and at least try to ride it back down to this 130 level support here but um all in all this is looking nice if you take it down to the smaller time frames as i trade here at core effects you can see we broke the counter our trend line here on the hourly and now we are looking to short it to this next move to the downside so not the biggest longest swing opportunity but it is definitely a nice trading opportunity for next week and something we want to be keeping an eye on for this trend continuation move Dollar CAD didn't do what I wanted it to the past couple weeks. Excuse me. When we broke up this red box, we set this higher high, pull back, higher low. Um, this was a good opportunity to get in longs, and there was some money to be made because we did move back up here, but it wasn't very nice and smooth. As you can see, we shot up, then we sold off, then we shot up, then we sold off, and now we've sold off again. We've broken structure, broken the 50 SMA, broken this intermediate black trend line, and really... Um, looking like price is gonna roll over from here with this pair. We got a lot of targets in the near future, so no clear, you know, big opportunities for shorting this, but we do have um, potential reversal here. We got this trend line, the next target, right in line with this support at 130. Then you got another support down here, 129, and uh, so on and so forth. So this pair, it looks like it's reversing. We set this higher high, then we set this higher low, then we set this lower high, then we set this lower low, so we are rolling over. Um, I'm not looking at the CAD to trade this week, but that is my breakdown of it. Then we have the dollar yen. Um, I have liked the price action this pair. We got a very nice strong breakout here, and then we got a sell off. Um, we're on very strong support here at 111. Today's candle close will determine a lot of what I do with the yen. If we get a bearish engulfing candle close here, I'm not looking to get this trend continuation move going. I'm looking at a broken trend line. I'm looking at a bearish momentum candle close and i'm not looking for an opportunity there if we get this price pull back before the end of the day and we close the big lower wick then there's a possibility that we could be catching this next move higher and catching this push off this lower this higher low to catch this next higher high move but um really we'll see how it closes today not much is going to happen by the end of the day so it's looking like it's going to be off my watch list but still want to keep it there just in case dollar swissy another one that's uh a tricky one so we had testing a strong trend reversal right now, right? So we have been in an uptrend, but we've been failing to break this 1.0 level that I've been talking about for a while with you guys. Um, we have broken this daily trend line, not the best trend line, but we have broken it. This intermediate trend line is a little bit strong. It's got multiple touches to it. And we are testing it. We're getting this Dragonfly Doji close here. We're on the 50 SMA. So there's really a bunch going on right now of uh, zones being tested. If it rolls over and breaks this trend line breaks 50 sma i think we could sell off 99 is the support level here that i am watching so that's certainly something i want to watch here but this pair could roll over and reverse this trend or you know we could see it rally and push back up to test that 1.0 level but all in all this pair is not really on my trading list at all for this week either just want to share my analysis with you guys aussie dollar 
Um, this has been a pretty nice pair, but we have been stuck in this low basing pattern. You know, could be a rectangle, bearish rectangle pattern here. Uh, it's still in this downtrend. We did get a nice strong bearish engulfing last time. Price tried to go up and break this resistance again at 74.50. Also tapped the 50 SMA and this daily, uh, this daily bearish trend line. Um, so nothing really too clear going on. We do see a lot of bearish signs, but nothing too clear. No real ideal um, entry or anything like that. But, you know, a break of this support at 73.50 could be a very nice significant trade. And it could be a nice, you know, catch the pullback to retest and short it off that. New Zealand dollar, US dollar, similar to Aussie, but I do see a little more of an opportunity. We do have a little bit more of a risk to reward if we can catch this move here, right? So um, we're in a downtrend. We hit the low, lower low, set a lower high, retested the lower low, now retested the lower high. Off this lower high at 68.50, we had a strong bearish engulfing pattern. Bounced off that, we are trading below the 50 SMA. We are respecting structure. Taking it down to the lower time frames, you can see counter trend line was broken. And we do have all of this open for profits. Whether you enter up here and try to ride it down, or you enter when it breaks this. Um, however it is that you trade, we do still have this all movement here that I will be looking to catch pips in to try to ride that down to the bottom of that pair there. All right, so that covers all the US dollar crosses. Now what I'm going to do is move into my actual watch list, the other cross pairs that I am watching for trades and see where we stand and what I'm looking at. All right, so we begin with New Zealand Japanese yen. I'm going to go ahead and take this off of here. I just wanted to keep it there to show you in a minute. But this pair we've been watching, we've been in a downtrend, not the cleanest. It's been making some pretty drastic moves, but we've made lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. Now we expect to see this potentially move back down and retest this low at around 74. So that gives us a lot of area and room here to make some money. So it's testing the support and starting to break below it. We got this nice bearish engulfing off of this weekly resistance level here. Um, not the cleanest and clearest setup per se right there, but um, it's definitely got some bearish momentum to it. And as you can see, we had a little bit of a head and shoulders, which is what I just deleted. As you can see, I'll throw it back on here. We got a left shoulder, came up to make a head, came down to form a right shoulder. Now we broke the trend line, retesting it. This could be a nice opportunity to short it in this area and try to ride. You see, you got a lot of opportunity to catch this move to the downside here. So um, definitely going to be keeping an eye on this pair. Not the perfect, perfect, perfect setup, but it definitely coincides with my strategy and definitely looks like it could be a good potential trade. CHF JPY, a um, little bit on its last leg here for potentials on my watch list. We had this inverse heading shoulders. We broke the neckline, hit the 200 SMA, sold off, rallied back. Thought we might have found support here to catch a long, but we did actually break through it. We got this tweezer bottom here, and I thought that might have been when it was ready, but then we had, again today, this strong bearish candle. The 50 SMA and trend line is getting rejected, so there is still some hope for next week if we can come up and recover from it. But if we break this 50 SMA and this daily trend line here, then that pair is no longer being watched by me, and I will wait for something further to give me a sign that I want to be in that pair and watch. Watching it. Alrighty, so that's Swiss franc. Now we got pound Swiss francs, another pair I'm watching. This one um, you know, has been trending downward. We had this nice strong leg lower. We bounced set lower low, rallied up, had this bearish engulfing. So now we can try to catch this next lower low here down to, I would say, about 129. Looks like the next reasonable target. Um, so there could be some opportunities within that move to catch with this pair as this is a pretty tight range and strong support level we're breaking and that should send it on a nice uh, tumble to the downside with some strong momentum there. Pound CAD's another pair I'm watching. I'm really watching for a break of this support though at 171. Um, we've been in this downtrend, we rallied and now we've come back down to this support. We could get a bounce here before continuing lower. I'm not saying I'm jumping right into a short on this pair. I'm just saying I'm watching it. I'd like to see it break the support. You can either trade the breakout of this support off of here, or you can do what I like to do, and you can wait for it to break out, pull back, and after that pullback, you catch it there when it rejects this as resistance now, and you short that, and you catch that run to the downside. Right, so that is... Um, Really what I'll be watching for that pair. That's more of a waiting for a break to occur. 
Euro pound is a nice setup that I like. Um, we've been in an uptrend, set a nice new higher high with this strong green impulse here. Pull back to the 618 fib. I'll get that fib out there now that you saw where it is. Pull back to that 618 Fibonacci. Came down. We are now closing here Friday with what looks like a bearish engulfing off of this uh, trend line here. We got a bearish engulfing pattern. Um, and if you drop it down to the lower time frames, on the hourly specifically, you can see we broke this counter trend line. And we've got what we call a rounding bottom reversal going on here. Um, you've got price just failing to make lower lows and it's rounding back up with this strong resistance here at around 88.95. And we'll be watching for this pair to go long next week um, off of this reversal on the lower time frame, but really just a trend continuation on the higher time frame. So that's a nice long I'll be looking for on the Euro pound. I'm also watching Euro CAD. This one to the downside though. Um, we were in a somewhat of an uptrend here, broke that trend line, strong bearish momentum, broke the 200 SMA, broke the 50 SMA, 20 SMA, shot down. So I'd like to see it rally up to this 153, catch a nice resistance, um, support turn resistance rejection here and try to catch that to the downside and ride it down uh, 100, 150 pips, something like that to the downside there. And last but not least, I'm watching New Zealand dollar, Swiss franc as well. This is a pair I've been watching short for a while. We've been at a very strong level. And as you guys can see here, we have been in this pattern, in this strong consolidation here with this 6740-ish um, area here holding as support. Now we did get a nice bearish engulfing here off this upper trend line. So we'll see if this is able to break finally this counter trend line and break to the downside and roll over down to around the 668, 666 level down here would be a nice target. So that's another one where we're watching the lower time frame counter trend lines. You can see this consolidation here and that would be a nice pair to catch the break to the downside and ride the next impulse leg lower out of this downtrend. All right, guys, so that pretty much covers everything I'm watching this week. Everything I got going on, very, very busy week again next week. So make sure you guys all stay tuned to what's going on. Be careful what pairs you're trading around what times because news events will certainly be causing some drastic moves. Um, as always, trade your plan, plan your trades, always stick to it, never deviate from that. Stay disciplined and eventually consistency will follow. All right, guys, thank you very much. I appreciate you checking this out. Check out the website, corefxtrading.com, the Instagram, core.fx. And I appreciate you guys tuning in to the YouTube page. There's plenty of other videos on here. Give them a look if you're uh, looking for some content. All right, thank you guys. I appreciate it, and I'll catch you next week.